lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. Join us for another episode of Change. What's up, family? It's me, Jerry Rose Live Worldwide from Positive Power Double XI. And you're listening to Elections Radio with Kimmy Kim. Oh, we must 
Father, Spirit, what Son, Healing power in the name of Jesus. Me whole again. Power to crush. Not to blood. Alcohol. Jesus. Violence. Anger. Bitterness. Not resentment. To blood. It's power. Of in the blood of Jesus. Jesus. He is a healer. He is a revealer. He is our director. It's power in the name of Jesus. Father God, for healing us, for redirecting us, for renewing us, the power and blood of Jesus, the power and blood of Jesus. Amen. Welcome, welcome to World Issues with the Sisters. Hello, this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. What a great Great topic that we're going to be discussing. What in your wallet? And I hear Pastor Pastor Bello. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine. That's the cold. I'm I'm glad that you I'm glad that you are healed and you know, I saw like so many wonderful posts with you and Pastor B. So I know y'all had a good time. I'm jealous. I sure am. So jealous. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that Myrtle Beach was a good getaway. I went to see the children and the grandchildren, and it was lovely. Um, I'm going to open us up with prayer so we can dive right into our subject. Our subject today is what's in your wallet. Remember, this is a series of preparing us for the beginning of this year. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, just to be in your presence. Lord God, we ask you to continue, continue, continue to show and shower mercy, favor, and grace upon us. Lord God, we're here tonight to hear a word from you. Lord God, give us that word. Give us, give us the words that you need for us to go forth. Lord God, we are here tonight to learn. Lord God, we're here tonight to understand your guidance according to your scriptures. Lord God, take all the glory, all the admiration. In your name we pray. Amen. So, Sister Kimmy, what's in your wallet? You know that commercial that they always have? And uh, (laughs) I was going to the steps of what we were going to do this week. And I said to myself, I said, wow, how can I really get all this information in that I'm trying to talk about for money? You know, because uh, people remember different. And when I say it that way, if I would call it understanding your money, okay, they say, okay, I heard that a billion times. If I call it understanding heavenly wealth, oh, I heard that a million times. But if I put up there what's in your wallet, people, okay, are curious. They, they, they are, diff- that's something different. So they want to know, what is she talking about when she say what's in my wallet? What my wallet has to do with what they're talking about, prepare yourself for the year? Well, it has a lot to do with it, as we see as we go in. We, we're, we're not going to be able to touch all the areas today. We might go back to it uh, next week as according to, how the spirit leads, but we're going to touch as much as we can. And we're touching upon different areas. We're touching upon giving. We're touching upon saving, investing, working. Um, We're also going to go um, and dabble into working hard versus being lazy. We're going into cheating others. Um, All that reflects on your what's in your wallet what is in your personal financial bank and I, i'm trying to put it in different terms so we can put the message out there in different ways now the way that this actual uh real issue is going to be based on is preparing us for the year and as we prepare for the year all of us has read the beginning of time. We've read Genesis. And uh, I know for a fact, 
I didn't see a 7-Eleven in Genesis. I didn't see a flea market in Genesis. Uh, I didn't see, well, our nowadays version of flea market. And I I didn't see Macy's. I didn't see any of this in uh, the beginning in the book of Genesis. I also did not see a third, uh, uh, let's say, a credit card. We do know that money was given for to pay the taxes uh, when Jesus was there, but that was in the mouth of the fish. So I would consider that like the first maybe ATM. Um, I wouldn't consider that the first credit card. Um, but I want us to know that God has a financial plan for us. One of the things I do in the morning and while I'm praying and, and I'm, I'm, I'm in bed and I look up and I say, Lord, I don't have any money, but you have all the money in the world. So I'm just going to tap into your abundance that you have already promised me. Guide me financially throughout the day. And you'll be amazed at what's happening. Um, I do have testimonies that I'm going to save to the end of February of the different uh, financial blessings that I've received and others have wrote in. And I want to share them at the end because I want us to pay more attention to what the scripture says than what people are testifying about. Because once you understand the scriptures, you'll be able to testify. Another thing I would like to say, too, is Pastor Bello is working on his second book, um, Poverty, I Divorce You Absolutely, which is um, an excellent book. He's working on part two, which we will have released shortly. And I encourage everyone to go out there and to read the book because this is 2018, okay? It, it is time for us to beat down poverty, okay? Poverty is not something that God has blessed us with. You're never blessed with poverty. Matter of fact, that right there is a disease. That itself is something that we have to make sure we pray and stay deeply rooted into the scriptures. The first one that I do want to touch upon as we dive right into the scriptures, I want everyone to know Proverbs is in the Bible for a good reason. And the reason I say that is because that is something to govern you. I, I, I would even venture out and say you should start reading it in the beginning of the year. It, it's packed with knowledge inside of Proverbs, and a lot of this is coming out of Proverbs. The first one we, we're going to dive into so we can get our questions and answers rolling is we're going to talk about giving. Now, you know how people get silent in church about giving, and I never understood why, because that's not the IRS. That, they're not asking for, uh, God didn't save 26.5%, or you have to pay 50%. He said just 10%, but we should be glad that we're able to give, because the meaning of being able to give means that God provided for us to give. I told a story maybe last year or the year before last, uh, when we were having some car issues. And I'm going to tell you, I knew God was above all other gods already. But he never to amaze me. And I did receive a check in the mail of something I was not even totally expecting whatsoever. And not only the check covered the expenses to – get the maintenance done on the truck, the change that was left over was exactly what I needed to pay the 10% off the check that he gave me. So um, I don't really remember the exact count, but let's just say 4000 4400 uh, came in the mail. 4000 was the truck. 400 was the taxes. I didn't have to worry about anything. God provided the money to pay for the maintenance and the money to pay the tithe. And that's the type of awesome God that we serve. I use those words because it's, it's no other way to explain God. God is God and God alone. So as we go into about giving, and the reason, another reason I'm going into giving is 
uh, Sister Kimmy knows several times I talk about we're going into tax season. Okay, pay God first. Pay God first. If you need to keep with one the next, God first. I don't care if you have never understood tithing. Understand this. He gave you the opportunity to get a refund. Pay God first. If you don't have a church home, you should find one. You should find one because we all need to have a guidance. We all need to have a church. We all need to have an altar that knows our name. Uh, if, if God has laid it upon your heart and also uh, you have already petitioned God about it, give your leadership, give your head, give your pastor, your bishop, your apostle, Give them a blessing from what you get. You can only get nothing less than blessed back. God has an unlimited bite. That's why every morning I'm tapping into it. And guess what? It never runs out. If he does it for me, he'll do it for you. His blessings as we go through this, you'll see it's it's never ending. He, He will never run out of financial blessings. So one of the verses for giving comes out of Deuteronomy 16, 17. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord, your God, has blessed you. I might have 4000 You might have two. Somebody has 10000 A lot of people say that, wow, 10000 That means I got to give up $1,000. Okay, you wouldn't have had the 10000 unless God gave it to you. So you can't afford not to give back to God. That comes out of... Deuteronomy. Now we're going to go to Mark chapter 8, verse 36. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? That's part of the opposite, which is part of being greed. So let's let let's break this down into simple terms. I can either, since God gave us freedom of choice, I can either be obedient to the scriptures and give my 10% or more, or I can just accept that I got this $10,000 because I prepared the taxes on my own, and this is my money that I already worked for, so therefore, I'm going to take it all. That's really your, your two choices. You, you can make a choice of doing the correct thing, what the Bible says, or being greedy and lose your soul. Wow, is your soul worth it? I mean, my soul right now, I'm going to tell you, without a shadow of a doubt, is just limitless, which means that I can't even put a, it's priceless, I should say. I can't even put a price on my soul. Because first of all, the soul that I have, guess what, everyone? It's God. It's not ours. We, we didn't make ourselves. God made us. So therefore, it is priceless because he hand-designed us individually. You might be like, oh, wow, she's going real deep. But I want you all to fully understand because uh, as leaders, as Christians, we are responsible for making sure you have the appropriate information. So that's why I try to take the time before we answer all the questions and get into the questions so everyone actually understands where it's coming in. So what's, what's, what's in your wallet? Whatever's in your wallet, have you designated that 10% to go out or – did you decide to keep it because you really didn't care about your soul? I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out there. Now, God didn't want us to be in debt, okay? He wanted us to be the head, not the tail, the lenders and not the borrowers. We go to Romans chapter 13, 8. Oh, no one, anything. Some people are going to be quiet now because they know some of them credit cards, they done racked up through Christmas. But it says, oh, no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Oh, no one. And that's part of our debt is because we want fleshy things. We're not understanding kingdom building. We're not understanding that we are just in this world right now, but we are not from this world. We are Christians, and this is not our home. We're aiming to go to heaven. So what, what is really in your wallet? Whatever's in your wallet is becoming where it's going to make you lose your soul 
Is it becoming where you won't get a placement in heaven? Is it becoming in there where it's weighing you down? And when I say weighing you down, it means it's all of debt and everything from the credit card is going to Is it weighing you down? If so, you need to do corrective answers. Pray to God. God is God. He will answer you. He will let you know because he knows the plan that he has for you. I'm going to do one more before we go in, which is about ethics and cheating. I know none of us do that, you know. But just in case you have a friend and know a friend that has a friend that that might be in this category, this is something for you to, to talk about over the water cooler or maybe in your commute in to work. It's coming out again, Proverbs. 2927, an unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. So let's go back to that famous, and we're going to start off with that famous first question um, that's going to, this quest, this uh, Bible verse is going to escort us in there. Now, we've already talked about, it's now cheating. We've talked about 10%. we talked about giving. Now, we always have day-to-day challenges, and some of the challenges is something very simple. So we're going to say, let's use the scenario that's always used. You go through a drive-thru, okay? You pay them 20. You know without a shadow of doubt you're supposed to get 11 and some change, but they give you 21 and some change. Do you call it a blessing? Or you being unjust, Sister Kimmy? What's your answer? Now, if I get the wrong change, you're asking me if that's a blessing or if that's unjust. Right? Are you right? being are you, right? Mm-hmm. Or if you take it, no, that's stupid, are you that, being unjust? that's unjust because when it's a blessing, you don't shortchange anyone. So. Um, I have had that happen to me when someone has given me the incorrect change and was actually more. I've given it back because you don't get blessings that way. It's more so that person made an error when it comes to counting. So you don't make, you don't get a blessing from a mistake. When God gives you a blessing, it's meant to be a blessing. So you can't be blessed when it's going to be um, hurting someone else. So it's like saying when people say, I want to make it to the top and I don't care who I hurt. I don't care. So when you are a believer, you do care who you hurt. You do care about your brothers and sisters when it comes to love. Because when you have the love of God in your heart and you know that person, you know that that was a, um, you know, the right change, you know, you have to go back and give it back to that person because that person can lose, you know, her job. So I really believe that it's not a blessing. And um, I will definitely return the um, incorrect change. Amen. Um, that's happened to me uh, recently, and I, I've returned it. The reason I returned it, I believe what's for me is going to be for me, and I don't have to second think it because I know that God has given that to me. And like you said, we don't want that person to actually lose their job. So I let them know, hey, this is not the right change. I'm supposed to get X, Y, Z. The lady was like, oh, thank you, thank you. And I told her, I said, because – I, I owe love to you, and I'm not showing love to you if I if I would take this and knowing that, you know, it could cause a lot of confusion later on when you're actually trying to clear your dream. Nah. So I, I did the Amen. same thing. So some people um, don't, and they try to justify it. And uh, some of these responses I got were just off of Google, okay, because the question has been roaming around for ages. And and these, I, I don't know if these coming from uh, Christians or, or or what, but some of the responses that came that I seen was, it's not their fault. They they shouldn't have to bear the weight of the world. So in other words, that let me know that they kept the money. Um, another response was, uh, God knows that I might need the money more. Okay, no. That's 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 not part of it, you know. That's that's not a Christian outlook on it. Um, and another one that I can remember that was on there is: Am I supposed to be responsible to everyone that gives me extra change to tell them 
that this change is wrong. So that lets me know that you are part of the unjust and you have decided that your soul is not worth anything because you are actually trying to gain the world and lose your soul. So that, that's some of the um, answers that was out there. Um, we're going to go into working hard and laziness. Proverbs twelve twenty four: diligent hands will rule, but the lazy ends in forced labor. Okay. In order to be the head and not the tail, that's because God has, has given us that favor over our lives which means that we have we are walking as Christians, which means that we're living as Christ, which means as we sing, okay, and I'm just pointing out the obvious. It's not something that I'm making up. I didn't see Jesus with a job. I, I didn't see him with one. But I didn't see him being lazy by no means. He was evangelizing. He was preaching. He was teaching. He was healing them, which makes him the the spiritual doctor. He was doing so much beyond beyond. You know, it was to a point that it was scandalous miracles on on forbidden days. So he was actually the, the hardest worker um, that that they could be ever told. Um, he was doing it. He was not at all being lazy. So uh, the question that I have now. Um, that I'm a place out there is we as Christians, how do we feel that, how do we feel we should feel our help, but not help? How do we feel that we should treat our destiny? Which means, and like I'm going to use my case, I do believe everything that's in the Bible, 110%, which is way over. Um, I do believe that I have a prescribed destiny. I do believe that I am the head and not the tail, the lender and not the bar. I do believe in abundance because God said so. So, therefore, I'm going to work as hard as I can in ministry to make sure that I am being obedient and going in that prescribed destiny that God has for me. So, Sister Kimmy, what do you say for this question? What are you doing to make sure that you're staying within your prescribed destiny? Well, what I do is I ask every morning to ask God to allow the Holy Spirit to direct me because I cannot do anything without my, as they say, uh, map. Because, you know, I am the passenger and he is the driver and I want him to direct me and lead me to what he wants me to do and allow him to dwell in my spirit because I had enough of me in my earlier, you know, years walking on this earth. And um, I know his way is the only way I know that he can do it because he has been keeping me on this destiny for the last <laughs> five years. No, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> wow. It's just an amazing role and road. And I know that if you, Keep your mind stayed on Jesus and you allow him to be the director in your life. If you allow him to lead you and guide you, he will do it. It's like walking on water, having that that unwavering faith and knowing that he will complete this good work that he has started in us. And I know he can do it because he said he would do it. And I am with um, Paul when he says, I start towards the high calling mark, which is in Christ Jesus. And I know he would do it because he says that he would never leave us nor forsaken us, and he will give us what we need so that we can fulfill the destiny of, you know, doing the Great Commission as found in Great in uh, Matthew chapter 28 to go and, you know, teach and preach and baptizing um, believers into believers in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I believe that is our main duties, but he allows our gift to be, you know, used for that purpose. And, um, I ask God each day, you know, to continue on dying me because I die daily and I'm in the spiritual warfare, but it's not impossible when I, you know, surrender. And I had enough of me, <laughs> so I'm good. And at times, I'm not going to lie, it's not a, um, one of those days where you just wake up and everything is going well for you, but you learn how in the midst of your midnights to carry on 
you become that that grounded soil as it speaks in Luke. When you become that soil that God wants us to become, you can go through anything because he would never leave us nor forsaken us. But it's by all means. It is I cannot say that I don't have trials. I cannot say that I don't have um um situations, but I don't focus on the situation. I focus on God. So I ask God on a daily basis to allow me to focus on him. And um, that is how I'm able to maintain this wonderful journey of being a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ and going out and, you know, loving on people who don't know him. And it's amazing what God can do when you love people. You have to have that love in your heart so people can hear God. If you don't have that love in your heart, you cannot do it. It's impossible. You can't be anointed if you don't have love. Because it says in, you know, First Corinthians, you know, hope, faith, and charity, those are the three things that he called the greatest. But the greater of them all is love. So you have to have love in your heart Amen. first before you can do it. Amen. 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 Uh, also, the caveat on um, when she said love, that, that right there drives a lot of our emotions. That's why it's the greatest. Um, Love will make you go two steps beyond what you might have done. So as we're relating to what's in your wallet, you might see someone. You got $2. You're like, you know what, all I got is $2. Let me just give them this $2. So love goes goes a a very, very, very long way. Uh, We're going to try to go now to... The verse about saving, that's also coming out of Proverbs. Who would have figured? The plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. Let me see. We have to let that one marinate because we know a lot of people understand saving. A lot of people know the basic concept of savings. I put something in. A little bit I'm going to gain. I want to get something out. But it says here, the plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. So it says the plan. So that lets you know that it's more than one river that should be flowing for you as it has in the Bible. Don't have all, you know how old folks say, all your eggs in one basket. The plan of the, the plans of the diligent lead to profit, the, not the plan, the plan that lets you know it's multiple, multiple, multiple screens. Um, you might have 401K. You might be trying to do a, um, a, what is it called, a CD. You might also be trying to invest in maybe real estate where you want to get in, get out. But it says the plan that lets you know you're you're not – being told to limit yourself to one avenue. There are different avenues that God wants you to venture out. Remember, we have everything inside of us that we will ever need. He had already put it in our DNA. That lets you know how special we are because each and every one of us might share similarities, but they are never identical to the last strand as far as our destiny as far as what God has planned for us. So that's why it's very important to do a daily revo- devotion with God so you'll know exactly what he, uh, what he has for you. Because I can't tell you. Sister Kimmy can't tell you. Um, your pastor won't be able to, but going to God will be able to let you know because he created us, what he has for us. Also, the Bible verse, planning ahead, Proverbs, a wise man thinks ahead, and a fool doesn't and even brags about it. Have you ever heard people bragging about, how, you know what, um, I pay myself first because I deserve it, because I'm the one that did X, Y, Z. Or you might hear a person bragging and saying, you know what, we serve a soon coming king. Why am I putting all my money in the bank? I don't know when he's coming. I need to enjoy myself now. That lets you know right here in Proverbs thirteen sixteen where it says a fool doesn't, which doesn't think to hear, and then he brags about it. So 
And that's why it's so important to understand and read the scriptures and apply them to your life. Don't be able just to remember them and you're not applying them because that's not going to get you into heaven. Being the, the Bible almanac vocally and not applying it is not going to get you up into heaven. We're going to go to another one before we go into our uh, next set of questions. And what we're going into now is verses about stewardship. And this is also what's in your wallet. All this revolves around what are you carrying in your wallet. And in your wallet, it's not just money. It's money, it's cards, it's little notes, it's, it's sometimes business cards, sometimes you have checks. There's a lot of things that's going on inside of, inside of your wallet. So we're talking about now the stewardship, Romans 14, 8. For if we live, we live for the Lord. Or it will, or... If we die, we will die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord. Wow. That lets you know right now that all your life is governed to being obedient and doing what the Lord wants us to do, not what's in your wallet. Thinking that you have arrived, thinking that you're big time, thinking that I can do what I want to do? No. That that clearly disagrees with what's in Romans 14, 8. If we're living, if we die, we're still the Lord, period. Uh, Nigeria say, full stop. That's it. Uh, what's the other one? Mic out. That's it. Nothing else that could be said to that. So what's in your wallet? Is it in your wallet where you're trying to lose your soul? in your wallet where you don't you disregard everything and you don't believe that your life belongs to the Lord, what is actually inside of your wallet that's making you not be able to get into the kingdom of God? And and the the, the wallet, the reason I, I'm using the wallet is because we carry so much that's personal inside of our wallet. And that stuff in there could really be damaging to our salvation. And I'm saying it spiritually and I'm saying it physically. It could be damaging to us. So we have to be very careful of what's in our wallet. Now, the the next question we have, this is the kind of questions that Sister Kimmy always like when we just lay it out there, like Willie Morris Jr. say, flat out. What really is going on with people's minds when they can't get the concept that we serve God and not the other way around. I'm going to give you a perfect example. I have been to places where people will actually say, well, this the Lord brought me here. He must want me here. And they're not in the appropriate place that they're supposed to be. Wow. How could you say that out your mouth when we already know that God doesn't make a mistake? Period. Uh, another thing that we need to stop saying, and this is part of what's in your wallet, you ask somebody, oh, how you doing? How was your day? Oh, I'm hanging in there. Okay, what are you hanging in there for? Just let me know that's, that's one of the things I don't like in. What are, you, what are you hanging on to? Are you hanging on to things that you shouldn't, that's weighing you down? Are you hanging on to unreal things that you think is going to happen because you have worked for it and not because you put your faith in God, what are you hanging in there for? The the correct answer would be, how is your day? Oh, I am blessed and highly favored because your tongue is very powerful. I have just decreed over my life that I am blessed and I'm highly favored. Remember, don't limit God. Highly favored. I didn't just say I was just favored. So in my wallet, if you open it up, it's going to be blessings. It's going to be prosperity. It's going to be favor. That's what I have in my wallet. I don't have something I'm supposed to be hanging on to. I don't have negativity. I don't have anything that's not of the essence of love. I don't have anything. So, Sister Kimmy, if we open up your wallet, because we're talking spiritually. If we open up your wallet, what, what can we find in your wallet? My wallet, I, you'll find blessings, prosperity. You're going to find favor. You're going to find abundance. What are we going to find in your wallet? Love. 
because there are times I may not have the money to give you that, that I wish I could, but I have love for you. I have passion for you. I have compassion for you. I have servitude for you. I have love for you because I know with love, it wins. Love breaks down strongholds. Love pleases the Father because he says that the first two commandments in the word is love. So my baby life is a love believer. I want to be a love believer. I want to be a love believer in, in spreading that love so people can understand that. It's not about what you have because my pastor, you know what? He's amazing. He went to Cuba and he was just describing the conditions that people are living under. And we have people who don't even have running water. We don't have people who have electricity. They don't have, you know, the richest of things on earth. And I just was taught that, you know, the United States is only 5% of the population in the, you know, because you know, the world. And I was just really amazed by how much we complain about the simple things like, you know, I don't have enough food. My bill is about to be. Uh, I don't have enough money to pay my bills, but you're paying your bills. But we have people in these countries who are praising the Lord without. And, you know, that was just so amazing just to hear those testimonies. And it, it gave me another outlook on life. It gave me another revelation that we are more than things than things on earth. We are God. We are the apple of God's eye. He loves us far beyond what we have on this earth. So, I want to spread love. I believe love matters because um, you can say all these things. You can say, you're going to pray for me. You're going to anoint me. You're going to fast with me. You're going to minister to me. But if you don't have love, how can you do anything without love? So my daily um, um, walk, I hope that uh, when people see my wallet, they see love because that is what I'm all about, love. Amen. Love. Uh, Oh, <laughs> I'm a love. Well, to uh, conclude, so we can go into the actual announcements. Um, what I want to say, one, we will continue this next week. But next week, along with this, we're going to. You know how we always have the myth busters, which will work out perfect with asking what's in your wallet, because we can also uh, put in the different myth busters. Um, things that have been said or told that is not even biblical. I uh, hope we can put in, integrated in our lesson. And also that I would like to And you know I love those. I love those. You said what? <laughs> and you know I love those type of um, topics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also um, this one fits perfectly in the, the path that I'm trying to give us for January and February which is understanding more about God, God's plan for us. So we'll be able to journey out because sometimes we get caught up in the world and we don't understand that God needs us. We're somebody's helper. We, we, we are uh, somebody's uh, problem solver. And we have to be a bit obedient and diligent, as it says here, to what God wants us to do. Um, I'm going to start off by saying that this Friday, Holy Mountain International Ministry will have a 12-hour, okay, nope, didn't stutter, 12 hours, 6 p.m., 6 a.m., prayer, music, more prayer, a little more music, even more powerful prayer for 12 hours because we understand the power of prayer. So that will go on this Friday. We have uh, Apostle Benjamin, and we will also have Apostle Israel Oyelade, which we're very, very, very familiar with. Both of them will be joining us. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you the time they're going to be joining us because we want you to enjoy the full 12 hours, not just the hour of this pastor or the hour of that pastor. We want you to enjoy the full 12 hours. We have one that's coming down from uh, PA, which is Apostle Chris, uh, and he will be joining us. So we have a lot of different ministers and evangelists and singers 
that are coming to join us for that 12-hour prayer. I'm telling you, um, we did a a actual um, pre-launch that was from about 6 to 2, and time went so fast. Because when you are having fun in the Lord, it's like time stands still. And we're going to have that place jumping p.m. to 6 a.m. So we're encouraging everyone to join us this Friday night. It will be live, streamed the whole time. So you roll over because you just had to take a nap. Guess what? Wake back up. We'll still be there praising and worshiping God. The 17th, we're blessed because... I have two announcements to make. Um, Pastor and I will be giving a lesson at the husband and wife retreat. That is on the 17th and 18th of February. And then there's another one that I was just informed about today. And I am looking that one up. That one is a dinner. That one is actually uh, one night. And that one is going to be at 7 p.m. Those tickets are $30. And the event is is going to be held in Laura. And that's with uh, Apostle Benjamin and his lovely wife, Lady Pam. Um, If you need that information, you can always go on my Facebook page or you can go on the Blessed Network or you can just simply uh, instant message me. Another one is through the eyes of Esther, the 17th of March. I'm telling you, tickets are going really fast, and I'm truly blessed that God has favored me with this vision. This one is awesome. It's different than last year. We have a play. We have vendors. We have um, an actual gospel concert and a red carpet. Gospel is going to be by Minister Howard Sapp. We have red carpet event by Minstrel Appointed. You don't want to miss her. I'm telling you. Um, She will be there doing our red carpet event. Positive Power, Jerry Royce, 21. He's doing the filming of the actual red carpet event. Yes, I brought in everyone that I knew would help bless all of us that's going to be there at the event. Um, the tickets are going fast. I believe they're at regular price now. If not, then next week they, they will be at regular price. Um, the last event, July 14th. Sister Kimmy know this one by heart. This is graduation first, Holy Mountain International uh, School of Ministry and Theology, the first one. Uh, to total, we have one, two, three. I'm in my mind making sure I'm not missing nobody. We have three doctorates, one bachelor, one associate, and one master's. So that lets you know we're going to have a pretty packed house. And if anyone went to last year's, which was through Eastern Shore, um, it was only standing room only. So I'm saying this, come early, okay? Come early, enjoy. Stay. Buy your ticket. Come up here. Fly up here. Drive up here. Buy your ticket. Because that evening, we have Elation's Red Carpet event. And that's our very own famous host, which is going to be Sister Kimmy Kim. She does her annual, and we're blessed to have it, at Holy Mountain International Ministries. So I'm encouraging everyone to come up. Um, Holy Mountain International Ministries. Sunday service, 10 a.m., join us, Facebook, come in. We'd love to see you live person. Um, Get your blessings, get your blessings, blessings on top of blessings. That's what we want this year. We want uh, blessings squared, you know, blessings time blessings. Also, we have tomorrow night, we have our prayer and revival service, prayer and revival service. It is a packed, really condensed section of a Sunday service. And the reason I say it like that is because it's it's awesome how everything is there. You get the meat, the potatoes, the dessert, the salad, the soup, you get everything. And we tell them to come out on Thursday night. 
So now I'm turning it over to Sister Kimmy Kim, and when she finished, I'll come back and we're going to say our blessings. But I want Sister Kimmy Kim to let us know what's going on with you. Well, my name is Kimmy Kim, and um, I am just continuing on praising the Lord and allowing him to use me. And uh, really, I'm just continue on promoting the magazine, the radio, and uh, we've been added on on All Nation Radio, a stellar award radio show. And it's um, heard by millions of people around the world by Bishop Sam McGill, and he is out of Atlanta. And it's a lot of things going on, and we're promoting a youth summit um, hosted by TNT Ministries. And it's just been a really busy, busy, busy uh, February. And um, in the midst of all of that, just staying faithful and allowing God to use me and uh, finishing up my, you know, uh, degree and a lot is going on, really. Going to real estate, going, going into uh, <laughs> my field that I really love, real estate, and um, just see what happens with that. But for the most part, this ministry found work and spreading the great commission, which is, you know, helping people understand that God loves them. And it's all about love. Amen. 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 So we're glad to hear that, um, and I, I'm going to say it because she didn't say it, uh, Sister Kenny Kim is one of the ones that will be graduating, and we want everyone to come out and support her. Um, we will have the actual announcements of the graduates, which will be coming out the first week of June because that's when everything has to be submitted. So we actually have the graduates' names out there on our um, advertisement because we understand, trust me, Pastor Bello and myself, we understand how hard it is to get any type of degree because you are putting forth extra effort. But the ministry degree or theology degree, and we even have a um, specialization and counseling and media, it's it's very hard. It's very, very, very hard. And we thank God that God has continued to move us in that direction to outreach and, you know, help people to uh, get their degrees in the selected areas of study. So did you have anything else, Sister Kimmy? I don't have anything at this time. Just want to give a shout out to Jerry Royce. And uh, we are also starting a TV show coming up to be announced more in depth. And uh, I love Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. And uh, I thank you, Pastor Bello. You're just an amazing sister. And uh, keep up the good work. I mean, you're a busy person. You. <laughs> Don't know how to stop, but I like that energy that you bring. So, you know, I'm I'm right behind you. <laughs> so you're getting me more well, moto. I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know that, more um, and I need I need to mention this that I had an awesome time out with Pastor V. Um, I'm telling you, uh, when we come back, we are coming back to Pastor, and I have been invited back. We are coming back, and I'm telling you, y'all, y- y'all need to come out. It is so refreshing to be around like mine. You know, that's why I enjoy so much going to church. And Pastor V gave an awesome sermon. And her sermons, and the reason I'm always taken by them, and I was explaining it to Pastor Bello, is that they're like stories. It's like she's telling you a story. She's quoting the scripture, but she's telling you a story. And and it ropes you so much into it that you, you don't really want it to stop. You know, we, we, we have to let it stop, but you don't want it to stop. And we had a, a fantastic time at church. And I, I, I really don't have words to put there. I already, I mean, that's why I'm smiling because it, it, was, a, it was a true blessing. And I encourage anybody, um, we're going to try to announce it a couple of weeks in advance that we will be with Pastor V again. Um, 
but you need to come out. Um, that you can see as soon as you walk in the door that the church is nothing less than being blessed. And the Holy Spirit, we know, was here before we got here. So people that say, I'm bringing the Holy Spirit. No, Holy Spirit was there. And it's evident that Holy Spirit has always been there when you go to Pastor V's church. So um, I had an awesome time. Uh, Pastor V, I thank you again for allowing me to be there. And um, that's how I wanted to spend uh, my birthday. I wanted to spend it with Pastor V at her church. I got my birthday blessing, and it was awesome. I had a really, really good time. Um, if all hearts are at court, we're going to close out. Father God, we thank you for today. Lord God, we thank you because you have opened so many doors for us. Lord God, you fought battles for us. Lord God, you stood for us. Lord God, you elevated us, and we thank you. We thank you for today because, Lord God, we want to be obedient to you. We want our soul to be rescued, to be captured, to go forth with you. Lord God, we don't want to lose our soul. We understand that we live and we die for you. Lord God, we ask you today to open up your heavens, shower down nothing less than abundance in our life. Lord God, we also ask you to bless us, watch us, and care for us. Lord God, now and forevermore. God, take all the glory and admiration. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Until we meet next week, Sister Kimmy is going to give us a fantastic song as we get off the air. See y'all back next week. Amen. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pray to him. You got to put in the work too. That's right. You just can't pray. He just give it to you. No, he ain't going to give it to you. You, you got to put in the work. He, he going to put in the work. We, we going to put in the work. And we put it together. And it's all to work. Now everybody knows that nothing comes easy when you gotta go lay down. You gotta go lay You might have a chance, but you gotta have faith. If you want the right thing, then lie. If you want that, everybody wants that easy road. Nobody wanna put in the work. Put in the work. Then you point your fingers at God, cause it didn't work. Now you got your feelings hurt. Uh, uh, uh. Why? Because you did not pray. Why? Because you didn't have faith. Why? Your heart was not in the right place. Why? Or maybe you was in a dark place. Oh, yeah. But this is not the time to be down. So you better stand up. You better turn that frown upside down. And you better stand up. You, you gotta put in the work. He, he gonna put in the work. We, we gonna put in the work. And we put it together, and it's all team work. See, everyone in life has had to go and face their fears. And if there is a lack of prayer, then soon follow the tears. So never give up hope, because there is nothing to fear. Just put in the work, and you will see it all so clear. Oh, so clear. So wait a minute, you got to focus on you. Oh, so clear. And when you plant that seed, that's when it'll come through. Oh, so clear. There is no I and you, so you better do up. Oh, so clear. I got the perfect partner for you. Just look up. You, you got to put in the work. He, we going to put in the work. We, we going to put in the work. And we put it together. And it's all teamwork. W means you're willing to fight for it all. O means outlasting every downfall. R means resurrection got all up in this place. K means you kick the devil right in his face. And I'm like, work, pray, pray, work, come on, work, pray. 